parents to that to your mom, to your child, you will give your child the keys of the house as a present. Yes, you give to change the life of your son or your daughter so that they do not have to begin life when you began. They can jump off from the shoulders of the parents instead of being tied up into the enemy of mortgage. They can just take the key of already owning a house. Now they can start thinking about buying a mall, building a mall. That's when the kingdom of God can start doing robust things, powerful things. But if we leave our children to worry about what we worried about, the kingdom of God will never take over. We need to improve the lives of our children so that they do not begin when we began. Some of us, when we began, we started going backwards to help the parents, to build for parents before we could build for ourselves. Imagine now when you do that to your child, how much advantage in life you would have done. The Bible says you must give to your family. Don't always make a court meeting. When your children want a toy, when they want a suit, when they want a, a shoe, when they want this, when they, you can't always have a meeting. The Bible commands you to give to your family. Someone said, I shall give to my family. Said, I shall. Psalms 126, verse number 5. Psalms 126, verse number 5. The Bible says there, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Verse number 6. It says, he who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. Now number 5, you have to raise an altar of sacrifice. You have to raise an altar of sacrifice. From time to time, you must challenge yourself to stretch yourself and not give ordinary. You must dig deeper into your pocket and give in a way that you have never given before. Once in a while, you must stretch yourself. Sacrifice, give, sacrificial giving is the giving that makes you feel the pinch. The Bible says, put that verse 6 again. The Bible says, he who continually goes forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing. When you give sacrifice, it makes you to weep. It makes you to cry. It makes you to feel it. And you are bearing that seed. But the Bible says, you shall doubtlessly come back with rejoicing and, and, and with your harvest. So when you keep sacrificially, you can be sure that a harvest is coming and you are going to come back rejoicing. It was painful taking it there. It will be glorious when you enjoy the harvest that God is bringing into your life. Somebody say yes. You know, I was sharing some testimonies this morning to the church. I was telling them, I remember very vividly when the church was still starting. My wife came to me and said, the Lord is speaking to me. I said, bring it on, baby girl. He said, no, the Lord says we should sell our only car and give all the money to the church. I said, what? Did I hear what? He said, yes, the Lord says you must sell the car and give all the money to the church. But because it's a trusted prophetic voice that I've lived it for many years, I obeyed. We advertised the car and we sold the car. All the money that came from that sale, we brought it to the house of God. The reason why we have a red carpet in the church is because in that time, somebody obeyed to sacrifice. The only car we had, we had to release it into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Somebody says sacrificial giving. So I said, sacrificial giving. And today, you talk of cars, it's none of our concern. Because at a particular season in our lives, we were able to obey God and to do something that costs us something. Someone said, sacrifice. There's a difference between giving Ishmael and giving Isaac. There's a difference between giving 
Isaac as a sacrifice and giving Ishmael as a sacrifice. When you give Isaac, you really have to go on top of Mount Moriah. The Isaac will have to ask you, Father, I see the knife, I see the wood. I see the knife, I see the fire, I see the wood. Where is the sacrifice? And you have to say, my son, God will provide for himself. When you are giving a sacrifice, it speaks back to you. So you are emptying the account. How are we going to live from here? You are giving this land. Where are we going to get the money to live from here? The sacrifice, when it's a true sacrifice, it speaks to you. You, you ask yourself, how am I going to live after this particular episode? But you do that by faith, and God provides in your life. So it's a sacrificial giving. I was telling them I was in America. I think this was the first year I went to America some seven years ago. And when I was staying, I didn't know that uh, they put me in a family that had a problem at the time. I think the lady just offered a room and I found myself there. I didn't know the people, so I was always in my room praying, studying, getting ready for service. But the lady would cook for me breakfast, you know, dinner after church, like that. And when I was praying in my room, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. He said, you have to give this woman 1,000 US dollars. I said, what? The Holy Spirit said, you must give her $1,000. So I tried to ignore that voice. One day we were eating breakfast, and while we were eating breakfast, I used to share with them the word of God after breakfast and pray with them. In that atmosphere, the voice came again, said, so into this woman a thousand US dollars. But then because of the atmosphere, I immediately opened my mouth and said to the woman, you must take me to the ATM, because I want to withdraw a thousand dollars, the Lord says I should give it to you. So the woman took me that day to the ATM and I withdrew one thousand dollars and I gave it to her. One thousand dollars is almost twelve thousand dollars. So I withdrew, that was my pocket money, and I gave it to the woman. Little did I know, after some as the days were going, I stayed there for a month. The lady began to open up, said, Man of God, you didn't know this, but uh, we just told the apostle we will host you, but we had nothing. We believed God that God is going to help us. Said my car was about to be out of the road because the registration had expired. Said I'm going to win this money, I will pay my tithes, I will renew the license, and we will be able to buy the food to sustain you in this period. We didn't know how we are going to sustain you. And he said, with this money, I will pay something for my child at school because my child was not going to be able to go to school. It was a painful sacrifice for me, but it was a blessing to another person. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So you must understand, sacrifice is not something you do because you are comfortable. Sacrifice is something you do and it costs you something. Have you ever given an offering or given something that costs you something? It costs you something. You feel it. You feel like, hey, this is like blood transfusion. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Number six. We're going to number eight. So two more after this one. So just so that you are not wondering. Second Chronicles 2020. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 